Welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Welcome back, guys. Back to the regular. Will's back, guys. Thank Mahalo. Thank you for waiting. Welcome on me. back, Will. I appreciate you, uh, <laughs> the patience and whatnot. Uh, thanks again for joining us, guys. It Resolves, of course, sponsored by Cardsphere.com. Their link is in the description. If you'd be so inclined, check them out. See what they're all about. Uh, along with our other links, social media, Patreon, the works. All of it's all down the good there. stuff. Um, yeah, all that's out of the way. Sweet! Ah! <laughs> Guys, Hello. welcome to our kind of a next two-part episode, right? Yep. Where we're going to be yep. talking a little bit about Battle Bond because obviously the launch is coming up in two weeks. Yes. And we want to build some hype for it. Uh, so Not that it needs the help. Not that it needs the help. But we just thought we'd uh, jump on the train. Jump on bit. that gravy train. Choo-choo! Guys, the schedule for today, we have our random card of the day, of course. Ah. We're going to be talking about Battle Bond. We're going to talk a little bit just about self-contained Battle Bond. So how right. to play, the mechanics that we're being introduced to, and then some of the specific cards that are going to be really, hopefully really great and mm -hmm. sealed and draft play. Uh, then we have our question of the week, and then we have our crack -a packs mm -hmm. sponsored by Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. Link is also in the description for them. So this is that crinkly pack. That crinkly pack. That <laughs> crinkly pack. <laughs> so let's kick it off. Mm. As always, with our random card of the day oh, in three, man. two, one. I missed this part. Oh, I love this. Golgari Rock right. Farm. Okay, so this fine. is a cycle. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> uh, they're called Bounce Lands. So basically, these enter the battlefield tapped. Yeah. When it enters the battlefield, you return another land you control to its owner's hand. Mm -hmm. And it uh, it taps to add black and green. The right. cycle, obviously, is all the guilds, the two-color guilds. This was originally introduced in Ravnica, so the two colors were very prominent. I really like these. Yeah, um, of course your variety of lands is necessary and I mean it helps magic thrive in all its yeah. different formats. Uh, when these were in standard, they did a bunch of fun things. They have, they they keep getting play in commander and stuff. Yeah. I can't think of many other formats that use these even though they're Amulet legal. Bloom did. Uh, right. And actually still does. There is a deck uh, that still actually works yeah and it's it's Outs just a variant outside of like one deck though yeah like yeah. these are it's, it's these are pretty commander. much sequestered for commander right now mm -hmm. but even so there's a bunch of good stuff you can do in commander um in ravnica draft these were very very good as well because it does actually work as ramp um oh yeah in the way that it, it pans out basically you are up a land when you play this in the long term so it does yeah. work out um if if you're confused you tap the land you balance first yes. to get your mana and then, then you yeah. play this so it's great. I love these. I mean, again, they're not amazing, but they're pretty good. No, I, I mean, yeah, there's a bunch of tricky things you can do with these if you try really hard. Like, yes. have, <laughs> like this works with um, Revolt, technically, right? If a permanent technically, control yeah. leaves the battlefield, so... It does technically work with Revolt. So um, anything that has that kind of byline, if a permanent you control does this, or if a land does that, they yes. do fun stuff like that. Yes. Um, as well as fueling, I guess, um, landfall. Stuff yeah, if you that's a good point. So there's a bunch of like really cute things you can do. Overall, though, these are just yeah, I mean, yeah. good. The modern deck, lands. by the way, the way it worked was you played Amulet of Vigor, so they come into play untapped. Mm -hmm. So you get to tap them, then bounce them. And so you get two mana immediately from the land, and then you can just put it back in your hand and just keep doing that, basically. It plays a lot of like, you can play an additional land this turn. Right. So you theoretically on turn two or something the original deck could mm -hmm. get primeval titan out on turn two if i'm that not mistaken right. yeah um it just with through? summer bloom i believe was the card which did get banned um but i mean outside of that deck like you said commander's really the home for those yeah and they are good yeah um they're lovely all right moving into it there's let's talk a about lot, battle there's a lot of meat here um so before we dive right in just Initial thoughts, Kev. Are you are you excited for Battle Bond? I am. I am very excited. So, uh, Two Headed Giant. If you don't know, Battle Bond is basically a set revolving around Two Headed Giant, mm -hmm. uh, which, if you don't know what that is, it's team play. So it's two v two. You and a, a friend of yours get to play. Are you saying I need to find people. a friend? What was that for? Uh, no, you're my friend. Ah, uh, cool. That was. That's great. Mm -hmm. Anyway. <laughs> no, um, 
So you get you as a team get to play against another team. You guys yep. can look at each other's cards. You guys can mm -hmm. consult and figure out what's the best way to play. Yep. You do not share mana pools or anything like that. But again, you get to sort of bounce ideas off of right. each other, and so it, it's really really fun. We've played mm -hmm. it a few times on stream. Yeah, and I love it. It's probably like my favorite way to play as a casual format because yeah. it's just pure fun. Like yeah, it's. Uh, a bunch of silly things can happen, not yeah. as silly as like Commander or what have you, but right, right. it's definitely a slower version of Magic. Um, but a lot of times it feels more exciting, right? Like a yeah. bunch of stuff is happening all at once. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in Two Headed Giant, uh, you don't share mana pools, but you do share life. Yep. And you share phases and your turn. Right. So you take your, your draw step at the same time, your upkeep at the same time. All this stuff is happening. So since two players are conversating, strategizing, <laughs> strategic tomfooleries happening. The game slows yeah, down is. a little bit. Uh, <laughs> definitely. Um, so it's just a neat way to uh, to just kind of take magic a little bit slower and yeah. uh, enjoy it like that. Um, but yes, this is our first real like dedicated out, thing. Yeah. 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 There, there have been sets before or, or product before that's kind of worked pretty pretty well for Two-Headed Giant. There have mm -hmm. been decks that are that are printed in the same pack or what have you. Um, but this is our first, like, Wizards has said, hey, play this together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And th th that's it. The way I like to think about it is, like, Conspiracy came out a few years ago. First mm -hmm. Conspiracy came out, and it took draft to the next level Definitely. in terms of, like, it affected just even the draft portion. Normally when you draft, it's like, okay, I pick a card past the pack. Well, this right. like switched that up completely. Mm -hmm. And this is sort of taking two at a giant in the same way and taking it that step further where you mm -hmm. actually, and we'll talk about some of this in a little bit, some of the mechanics and things like that actually break the original rules of two at a giant, yeah. which is very similar to what Conspiracy did for drafting in general. Mm -hmm. So like, it sort of is just taking it that next step, diving a little bit deeper mm -hmm. and just seeing how far we can take it. Which is awesome. Well, this too, Battle Bond, also kind of shakes up draft as well. It does. Uh, because as it is a two-headed giant format, or even though it's a two-headed giant format, it is meant to be limited. Yeah. So you're not going to make constructed mm -hmm. Battle Bond decks. You're going to draft it. Um, so really, I guess, let's go into how all that works. Right? Tell me how it works, Will. So when you and your partner sit down to play a game of Battle Bond, uh, if you are drafting... There's going to be four packs of Battle Bond. You and your partner are going to draft together. Mm -hmm. So you'll pick two cards from that pack before you pass it, right? So that's how you accumulate 40 cards for each of you. So you right. just get an extra card each pack. Um, so you can talk together. Mm -hmm. You can talk about, ooh, let's try to do this thing. You strategize while you draft, which before has never happened, even right. in team draft, even in team sealed, stuff like Normally that. Normally you sit a seat apart in right. a team draft. And there is no communication. If you do yeah. it in a tournament, you get kicked out. You can't exactly. talk. Exactly. <laughs> Not so anymore. You do it together, which is really sweet. Yeah. Uh, and after you have your, your card pool, you each make 40 card decks. Mm -hmm. And then in sanctioned play, you'll play one game. And that's a match. Yep. That's it. Um, and other than that, at that point, it's just two-headed giant. Yeah, it's regular two-headed giant. Now with new cards. Um, I really love this rule change because I think it would have been very simple for Wizards just to print a bunch of cool cards that work together but mm. not give us the option to draft together. Right. I think it elevates uh, strategic play and like the team element. Yeah, just. definitely. And I do think too, and I don't want to delve too deep into the mechanics, I, I already mentioned them once, but... <laughs> Uh, there is a, a new mechanic that two cards basically actually mm -hmm. fetch each other out and work yeah. together. We'll talk about um, all that. Baby. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit more, but I just want to mention those cards are always found in the same pack. So when you open them up... Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's actually okay. something that they've confirmed, as well as if you get a foil mm. version of one, you will get the foil version of the other. So two fo ah, two foils is possible. I did not know that. That's um, cool. I just found that out, actually, that's via sweet. an article Mark Rosewater uh, posted. Get on Mark. So, yeah. Is it the... As of recording this, the 28th, the... Um, I guess it, it was the Making Magic article? Was it that one? It might have been. Honestly, it was kind of... I, I didn't remember. finish that one. I don't know if it was in there or not. I it's, just it's I just saw he though. tweeted out an article, mm -hmm. and like part of it, part of the like headline section was basically like, hey, foils, you will get both. You know what I mean? That's so really it's cool. It's kind of cool. That's really um, cool. I like that they're doing that because it, it just makes it a much more exciting draft experience. Sure. You know what I mean? Definitely. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So... Good. 
That's how, uh, <laughs> that's how the structure of Battle Bond's a little different. Um, let's talk about mechanics now, because there are a bunch of new cards, yeah. a bunch of new things. So uh, This is a mostly original set. Yeah, so. mostly. Um, that being said, there's some really good reprints. Uh, we will talk about that mostly next week. Uh, but right. I do want to talk about... The first mechanic I want to mention is Assist, and it was actually mm -hmm. the first one I referenced. And basically, like we said in the beginning, in regular two-headed giant, mm -hmm. other players can't help you play spells whether they're, they're on your team or not. Assist mm -hmm. switches that up. Mm -hmm. Any other player can actually help you whether they're on your team or not is right. actually important too. Right. Uh, but yeah, the idea is that other players can help you. You can work with somebody and say, look, if you don't have anything to do this turn or if you think this is gonna forward our game plan, let's actually both use our mana to play this spell because hopefully it's gonna get us that one step further. Right. So. Uh, what's interesting about assist, um, it definitely changes the rules. Uh, yeah. it's, you also can't pay the colored cost for cards. Right. It's just generic. Which is, I think, just a good way to balance the mechanic yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So it doesn't completely break the game. Like, you can't hide cards in someone else's deck or anything like that. You know what I mean? That would be really cool, though. That would be sweet. <laughs> but it's... Yeah. It's silly. But, um, it is. Yeah, yeah. Do uh, you want to talk about a card with assist and kind of... Do you want to just talk about one? this one? Because it's already up. Let's do it. All right. Game Sorry. plan. Which I think was funny... You said game plan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually didn't mean that. <laughs> uh, look at that. Moving forward. Game plan <laughs> is a sorcery for five and a blue. With assists, any other player can pay up to five, the five generic, to right. help play this. Each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library, then draws seven cards, and then you exile game plan. Uh, I mean, it's pretty straightforward wheel mm -hmm. effect. Um, yeah. Pretty interesting, In but... Blue. In blue. No less. Yeah. Uh, kind of classic, though. Um, right windfall. now, wheels are red, dude. Oh, well, windfall. windfall. No, you're right. You're right. Uh, yeah. True. But it is, I mean, it just kind of shows off that, like, if you guys, if you and a teammate, for instance, are like, God, we really don't have anything, mm -hmm. or we're, like, being milled out for some reason, I don't know, you can <laughs> you can play this card yeah. together and hopefully get that momentum back. Right. Uh, it is sort of a buyback into the game is what yeah, this card definitely is. Really but um, yeah, it just kind of features assist in a good way. I, I dig it. Assist, I love assist. Uh, that's there are cards it. that have X, by the way. And yeah. Other um, players, I don't remember the what exact was The card. crowd goes wild is what I'm thinking of. It's the green, X and one green, uh, support, and then any creature with yeah. a counter gets trained. Oh, here we go. The yeah. crowd goes wild, yep. Wow, you like nailed that on the spot. Nice job. Wow. I'm impressed. First day back. Look at that. I know. I do my yeah. homework. Um, I yeah. looked at spoilers in, <laughs> on vacation. <laughs> on vacation. Because that's did. what you do. I did, actually. On vacation. I'm sure I, I, did. I did. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so you and you know your teammate basically can build this up mm -hmm. as much as you want, as many lands as you have. That's yeah. pretty cool. Done. Um, I'm going to quickly mention support. Uh, it's not a new mechanic, but it no. is back in Battle Bond. Mm -hmm. um, and it works great. Support is like a team buddy yeah. yeah thing, and it also you can put counters on any any creature, uh, so it just kind of makes sense. Yeah, so that's in there. Um, but there is a third mechanic. Uh, yeah, so this mechanic is interesting. I'm trying to find a specific card. Okay, but the the mechanic while we're going through this is this one. Okay, <laughs> yeah. uh, the mechanic is partner mm -hmm. with is sort of the keyword text. And basically it's two cards, both of them partner with each other. Mm -hmm. And when one enters the battlefield, a target player can actually pull the other card out of their deck and put it into their hand. Yep. That's basically how it works. So the one that I have brought up here is Peer, Imaginative Rascal. I love this little guy, he's adorable. Uh, it partners with Toothy, Imaginary Friend. Yep. So when you play one or the other, you get to pull out uh, the other card from target player's deck so if you're right your teammate has it and these are the cards by, by the way that like you'll have both partners in one pack so yes. you can draft both at the same time if you'd like mm -hmm. uh if one or more counters would be put on a permanent your team controls put one put that many plus one of each of those kinds of counters on uh the permanent instead yeah and then toothy just kind of goes along with it basically if I'm not mistaken. I, he's here. I don't know what Toothy does, actually. Uh, so whenever you draw a card, put a 1-1 counter on Toothy. The other one just kind of boosts it. And then when it leaves the battlefield, draw a card for each 1-1 counter on it. Cool. So Got generally, it. these cards, like the effects of these cards kind of work together is the idea. Naturally. Um, and they also feature interesting artwork. Uh, because one will be the forefront, whatever the actual main card is. Like this has Toothy as the main art. 
but Pierre is actually still in it. And then that works like they're planeswalkers. Both of them are back to back, so it's kind of sure. cool. Yeah. Um, the artwork is uh, interesting in this set. Uh, I think it's very cool. Like, not a huge fan of the artwork. Overall. I like it a lot. It works with duality a lot. Two it does, things yeah. are usually always in the art somewhere. If, yeah. it's, if it's a partner, especially, um, but it plays with pairs. All it the does. Time. Mm -hmm. Magic likes their symbolism. They like, do. look at doubling seasons too. Yeah, but this art is not that great. I love the seasons. art here. It's. I mean, it's, it's nice, but it's. Like, I like it better than the old art. Really? Yeah, it's just That's interesting. Two wolves. Mm. Doubling seasons in here. Spoiler. It also reminds <laughs> me of Ravnica a lot, and Ravnica I, has fair. my favorite. Mm, it's probably my favorite overall theme in yeah. terms of art, the art direction yeah, yeah. because it's. It's like all very unique things that all tie together. We'll talk about Ravnica soon. <laughs> I was gonna say we will be revisiting the revisit of Ravnica. Let me not <laughs> let me not get on my my art nerd soapbox for a second. Um, but yeah, um, that's the mechanic. I forgot where I was going with that. I don't know where you're going with it either. Partner, partner with. Part of it. Tools. it is pretty cool. Yeah, um, much. It's it's going to be really interesting to see how these like how powerful this mechanic is in mm -hmm. particular. I think um, assist is just going to be good. I don't think there's a question there. I think partner with is going to be good too. But I'm mm -hmm. interested to see like, and in in, com in comparison to something like assist, is this going to more like be the focus of the format? Are you going to shoot for these partner with cards when you draft or? Maybe not so much. I don't know. Well, I'm just I, interested to see. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna it's gonna shake out. I think depending on what the strongest partners are, sure. right? Like Toothy's is okay. Yeah, he's fine. He gets you bonuses for drawing cards, and there are mm -hmm. plenty of draw spells. In yeah, yeah. Blue, all right, that's fun. But like, <laughs> also, quick aside, the two OG Planeswalkers. Oh yeah. Do you know some names? Yeah, Will and Rowan. Kenrith. Kenrith. It sounds a lot like uh, Kevin almost. Will. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so this is obviously uh, me. Oh, okay. This has got to be you. I'm the I'm Rowan, the girl. Yeah. With my long flowing yeah. blonde locks. You gotta start growing your hair out, and then I've already done that once. <laughs> you guys, that never seen that. <laughs> that's your new cosplay. Yeah. <laughs> is uh, her. Okay, so bring it back. Um, yeah, it's gonna definitely depend on what the strongest cards are. Mm -hmm. Um, I think. I'm. They always balance things very well. So these yeah. the planeswalkers, as you say, they're always going to be in the pack. Mm -hmm. Are these going to be in there together? They Is, should be, according. Because they're partners, right? Partner with. They are yeah, partners. Yeah. They should be. I'm, I mean, that's what I've been told. Right. So. My thing is, you're giving you're giving players two planeswalkers in one pack. Mm -hmm. They're. But they're pretty good. Like. Yeah, they're actually really good. They have to be balanced <laughs> some way. I think so, Will is I, I the better one. I'm just saying that because he's blue. No, but I actually do think he's better. Uh, I think this is an interesting plus ability. Each have base power and toughness. Yeah. Um, oh, no, sorry. It just wasn't, it just wasn't yeah, in the text. Yeah. I thought it was like... It like nullifies two creatures, yeah, yeah. basically. Sorry, I got confused. So it's built-in protection. Um, then you draw cards and do, 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 you can ca cast something for a little bit less and then you get an emblem with whenever you cast an instant or sorcery you copy it and you can choose new targets obviously whoop, whoop. yeah it's um, fun. i like the first ability though i think it's interesting um i i thought it was like i thought it said it had base power and toughness and then that's it so i thought it was like <laughs> make literally no sense yeah i thought it was reverting things back to like <laughs> i thought it was nullifying counters basically yeah yeah but um they can be your commanders too. They can be your commanders. Yeah, thing. We'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll talk about that next week when we. Uh, so into that's that, fun. But. Okay, so that's partner. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> Happens. I'm back, as you well know on this show. <laughs> Me never. <laughs> we both do. I'm never distracted. <laughs> I don't tangent. Um, Shut your face. Um, anything else that you wanted to talk about mechanic wise? Anything interesting? Um, no, mechanically, I think all these things are really cool. Um, yeah, it yeah. feels it feels like they're speeding up, or it's going to be like a, a really quick. It does kind of feel that way, right? Yeah, because on initial look, because you can fetch some guys with partner, mm -hmm. you can make a bunch of stuff big yeah. with uh, uh, support, um, and then I've already forgotten the other one. Assist. Um, yeah, just seems like it can be a really clutch play. Oh right? yeah, definitely. Just if you in a pinch, you can figure something out with yeah, it. Yeah, assist something crazy out. I think it'd be really cool. Yeah, um, definitely. So, I guess some yeah. original cards to talk about. If there are any that stand out, what um, 
I mean, I think we talked about a few Should already, I? obviously. The Planeswalkers are mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, I really like Brightling. This is an interesting card to me. I think I think the Planeswalkers are okay. I don't want to let you say that for free. Okay, that's fine. I think they're all right. At six, they're not like they're not game breaking, no. but I think they're good. And I don't think they can be because no, if you get them both, not. you can fetch them out. Each out, exactly. it's kind of like, crazy. So that, they can't be that good. <laughs> yeah. No, um, um, but that and that's just it. Is they can't yeah. be super super good. Yeah. Um. So they're they're fine. They're yeah. Fine playing yeah, yeah. Um. I don't think they'll ever be a commander. <laughs> no, they're not good enough for that. No, I don't think I don't so. Think. Um, Unfortunately. There's probably going to be a deck, but I don't think it'll be competitive. People will make it, but yeah. yeah. Um, Brightling, yeah. sorry. Brightling is really Talk interesting. About Brightling. So Brightling is a 3-3 three, three for 1 and 2 white. It's part of a giant cycle. Mega, mega cycle. Mega, mega, mega cycle. Mega cycle. Yeah, uh, yeah. Spanning multiple sets, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Aetherling, I guess, was the latest one that Aetherling, we had. Aetherling, Thornling. They're all like... Changeling? They all have certain just, abilities, like lying. interesting little things. So while you're looking that up, yeah. Brightling, for one white, uh, you can give it Vigilance until end of turn. Additionally, for one white, you can give it life Lifelink. Excuse yeah. me. Additionally, for one white, you can return it to its owner's hand. And then for one generic, you can either give it uh, plus one, minus one, or mm -hmm. minus one, plus one until end of turn. Yep. Um, so it's sort of just like built-in protection, built-in bonuses, and built-in damage output or blocking output, depending on the way you want it. Yeah. So it's super flexible, is the idea. The callback to me, I mean, is obviously Aetherling. Um, yeah. That's the card I think that will stand out in most people's minds. Yes. Uh, one because it's in the same mega cycle. Yeah. Uh, two because it was such a powerhouse in standard. Oh my gosh. That's pretty much troll. Well, pretty okay. much whenever it was in and whatever deck it fit in. Yeah, it, yeah. It did so much for you. It was a workhorse. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. The Lings are... <laughs> lings. Uh, they're sweet, pretty Full much. Full Metal Alchemist reference. Brotherhood. What? Ling. The prince of... Uh, don't even worry about it. We'll, go, we'll gloss over this. If you've watched Brotherhood, you know who I'm talking about. Starcraft. Oh, I don't Full care about that. Alchemist. Yeah. What? It's just you and me now. Kevin's, <laughs> Kevin's on his way out. I'm gonna go watch some Brotherhood. Um, <laughs> Aetherling was a monster. Um, so this guy just does pretty much anything you need. Yeah. Comes in at three. Is he rare or mythic? Mythic? I can't. It's hard to tell. Mythic. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, definitely. He's, he's really strong. Mm -hmm. Draft Brightling whenever you can. Uh, it's monstrous. Yeah. Yeah, it's super super. It good. will do so much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, cool. Okay. Um, Any cards you want to talk about? Um, original cards? Nothing, like, sticks out to me as being crazy. There are a bunch of really cool reprints. Yeah, um, there's some really good ones. Cool. Yeah. I'm su I'm surprised about this one. I just didn't expect it. Like, I'm glad it's in it. Well, I didn't expect a lot of these, so. No, well, that's fair. fair. Um, they don't know what we're talking about. No, uh, no, we're just pointing. You guys uh, no We clue. were talking about. <laughs> Mystic Confluence. Mystic Confluence. <laughs> um. I love that card. It's really, really good. Yeah, great card. I'd like to see some other ones in there, though. Yeah, like the, so... Like the other cards from the cycle. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Fiery I, Confluence would have been pretty sweet. Um, yeah. This the kind of weird. On a top level, because I don't want to get too far into reprints, because we're saving that right, for the next episode. Next time. Sorry. But just on top level, kind of interesting stuff to talk about mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um there are some really good reprints in this set obviously yeah. mystic confluence we already mentioned doubling season there's quite a number of other ones at the rare and mythic slots um but there's also some that are lower down in the in the rarity cycle and yep, this is that. like this is what sets uh, generally i feel like are missing and what made modern masters og modern masters so good um we're getting stuff like uh, Spell Snare, Swords of Plowshares is reprinted, Chain Lightning mm -hmm. is in it. Um, yeah. There's just a lot of good stuff. So I'm just excited about that, really. Beast Within. Yep. Um, a lot of good cards are being reprinted, and they don't have the necessarily like crazy high value, but they always have use. And so yeah. that's the key for my... When I look at a set, if a common and uncommon slot has at least a few cards in that like category where mm -hmm. they don't necessarily have a ton of value, but they're just useful cards to get... It's great, because when you open that card in a pack, it's like, okay, well, I may not have gotten my full value back, but I got a good card out of it. Yeah, especially, so, I think, if you open Swords, that's what you feel. Yeah, Swords is great. Um, they have reprinted Swords, like, a million times now, but... Oh, yeah. 
Like they did swords in the last. Uh, <laughs> it's everywhere, right? Well, it's like their go-to because they don't want to reprint Path to Exile that much. It's too good. I mean, swords is better in my opinion, but Path is more desirable, and they want to keep value oh, at least somewhere there. Duh. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it is definitely because it just gets you gets them life. And yeah, and they don't care about life. Yeah, it's so much better. Um, yeah, and they they downshifted a few cards. Oh yeah, um, yeah, it's it's weird. Some went down, some went up. Um, what went up? I can tell you. Please do. Kaveen. I haven't actually looked um, at the rarity shifts. So, rare to mythic doubling season. Uh, of course. course. Land tax. Sense. Yeah. True name was a rare at one point. That's true. It's but it was now. only made in Commander, right? Uh, Before this? Uh, like 2013, uh, I believe. Is it true? Yeah, I, I think, think that's so. true. Um, and then you have Mycosynth Lattice went from mm. rare to mythic. Okay. And then Angel of Retribution along with Fair Hydra went to went from rare to uncommon. Sure. Um and then uncommon to common, you have a few that you don't care about. Or yeah. Drake, I guess you would care about. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. But there you go. Yeah. Um Yeah. So uh, the set shifted some stuff around. Um I think that's all I wanted to say about it. I was Yeah, I mean I don't know how to tie that up. When I started talking, sometimes I speak and I don't know where it's gonna go. That happens a lot on this show. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, but I think that's I think that's it. The no, I I'm really excited about this. Battle Bond. Uh, Battle Bond's really really sweet. If you have not played two at a giant, now is the time to try it for sure. Mm -hmm. um, well, Battle Bond specifically, because it, it is going to be totally it's different. Than very any... different. It's taking it to another level. Yeah. Uh, which is exciting, I think. Mm -hmm. So definitely give it a shot. It mm -hmm. just looks like a great set in general, though. Anyway. Yeah. Which we will talk more about next week. So stay tuned for that. Well, well, we'll talk about how it affects other things. Right, more. sure. Okay. Um, yeah, please go and play Battle Bonds. So yes. They keep making fun sets like this. Yeah, to play do with. that. <laughs> uh, it looks good. Um, our question of the week is actually to do with Battle Bond, which is just what is your opinion on it? It can be I love it, I hate it, I think it's okay. Battle Bond? Good. I guess could be one, but I guess. If you've made it this far, <laughs> you should probably know what it is by now. Um, Maybe we're just on mute. Came Maybe. in the background. That would be awkward. We started playing after one of uh, Wedge's videos. <laughs> it was like a next. Topical. Um, <laughs> Wink. Uh, yeah, Crack of Packs, guys. Sponsored by Grand Slam. We have our gold cards. What is yours, Will? Squee! No, it's not. <laughs> Mine's Squee. It's true. Um, no, <laughs> it is um, the big scary elf man. The Steel elf. Leaf Champion. <laughs> That's what he's called, though. Big so, Scary Elf Man? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm definitely making Mono Green. Oh. That's an, I didn't get it. I didn't either. Um, I got an interesting card there. This one's fine, I guess. <laughs> it's oh, okay. Okay. Um, weenies is a thing. White is a, white is a really strong color in Dominant Area. It is weirdly strong, yeah. Like, white to me has always been just a good supporting color, but it's never been like... The forefront of a deck, I think. Yeah. Even in like Selesnya Beatdown, obviously mm -hmm. everything else is green white, but like the white cards don't really give you that much stuff. Yeah. The white cards for limited in Dominaria are kind of nuts. Yeah, they're really good. White's so, super strong. Specifically so, white and yeah. blue together. The I think historic white and, deck. I think white and green. Well, yeah. yeah historic yeah. is very good. I just I like the I like the Selesnya. Oh yeah, play. definitely. I mean, it's good too. There's no, it's, nothing it's, wrong with that. Get that Shauna. He's nice. But I got a Benelish Marshall. Benelish? Benelish? Interesting card. Hard to, sometimes can be hard to cast, but um, that's Is it, literally yeah. the only down. 3-3 three, three for 3 white. Other creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1. Yeah. So like, it's on curve, but if you're playing in more than one color, it might yeah. not always be on curve. Yeah. Right? That's the thing. You um, do take it though, right? Um, probably my other, I mean, I have... Land of Elves, that's good. Yeah. Um, oh, actually, that might be um, the card. I love Oh, that. I forgot what she did. Every time you play honest, one, you draw yeah. a card. Gain a life, too. And card. gain a life. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that no. Is, um, That's oh. probably what I would pick. For... Yeah, in a ramp deck, though. Yeah. I mean, sure. it's blue-green. Sure. Um, I like blue-green. Yeah, anyway. solid. Uh, so, my rare is Jota, Archmage Eternal. 
I don't think this is very good in limited, though. It's, no, it's, it's really not. Uh, it's really, I mean, it's really not. great as a Brawl Commander. Uh, Spore Swarm is definitely my pick. My pack is generally not very good. And this card is actually fantastic. It's three and a green, instant speed, put mm -hmm. three 1-1 one, one Sapperlings onto the battlefield. Yeah. I love the green-black Sapperling deck anyway. Slimefoot, you're my man. <laughs> Um, He's and so instant speed generate three tokens uh, surprise an opponent or do it you know just in a timely manner mm -hmm. and it's great so yeah. I dig it I like I mean instant tricks are really cool and I, yeah I can't think back to one that makes tokens was that a good way to say that I can't think back probably to one. not that's okay brain not pull card from very... past that do what that card do at fast speeds <laughs> apologies from me to you <laughs> Whoops. Doth thou accept? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, uh, so, yeah, to see a token generator in speed is neat. Yeah. Um, whoo! Man. I'm back. I, let me address the white stuff on my hands. I never did that. I've, I've been painting my house. He um, has a new house. That's why you haven't seen me. I went to an island that way, and... It's in the living room. After we came back, the day we got back... Uh, we started working on the house. We closed the day before we left, came back. We've, we're both in the middle of move. Well, I'm done with my move, but you're in the middle yeah. of the move right now. I am. Uh, we wrap up the 16th and 17th, but right now we're making the house ready. That's awesome. Congratulations. Oh, it's so much work. We found, we have fire ants. Oh, that's a problem. If you're not from the South <laughs> and you're from somewhere else, Russian viewers? <laughs> oh, you Russians. Fire ants. Picture, I don't know what bugs you have in Russia, but no picture clue. whatever kind of bugs you have, <laughs> but much meaner. And that's what a fire that's ant fair. is. That's fair. Yeah, that's a good assessment. They're ants, but ants are normally afraid of people. They're like, I'm a person. I'm an and ant they away. say it that way too. Yeah, you can hear them. Um, but fire ants are like, oh, a person. Murder! <laughs> I'm going to kill him! Yeah. That's going to be the loudest audio in the entire podcast is you yelling that. <laughs> yeah, fire ants are tiny demons with six legs and very yeah. small brains. They're very evil. Um, They're the most evil. Yeah. I, Pretty much. Yeah. That, anyway, for us. <laughs> anyway, I have, I'm have. i trying to poison them. Um, Alright, that being said, maybe I'm the most evil. Maybe, because you're poisoning the I most evil thing. I spread traps around their home today. <laughs> just like... <laughs> Take it to your queen. I like that this has become us at the end of every episode. We talk about things that have absolutely nothing to do with magic. Well, it's kind of become the norm. Look, it's that... kind of a ripoff of the command zone. Sorry, command zone. Is it? Yeah, because they do that, the cleanup stuff. I've never made it to the end of a command zone episode. Really? I watch it pretty regularly. You know my attention span yeah, it's while pretty short. we're making our show. Yeah, that's true. I get that. I can't sit an hour and a half and listen. <laughs> I love those guys. Yeah, they're But once I learn what I need to learn, I'm out. Again. That's fair. That's good content, though. But it's yeah, they always content. do a cleanup step where they talk about anything unrelated to magic. Oh, that's really cool. Can we riff on that? We are. We, are. You're we already right. do. <laughs> <laughs> we have for like months now. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> sort of just naturally. <sighs> oh, I, got, I hope you guys like the new setup-ish. I mean, it's not done, but it's getting there. Yeah, don't look where you can see the wall. We, also, we might cut that out. We also need our logo <laughs> up here, which we're working on getting. <laughs> just picture IR. We'll just like tape, <laughs> like a, a printed version of the logo right Solid. there. Solid. Perfect. Solid. You can donate to help us get out of pocket <laughs> and put up a logo right here. On that note, <laughs> we're going to get out of here, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Battle Bond. Oh. Stay tuned next week where we're going to talk a little bit more about it, but in reference to other formats, how it's going to affect stuff outside of just two at a giant. But until then, we're going to get out of here. My name is Kevin. My name's Will. This has been It Resolves. Thanks for watching, guys. I hate ants, Kev. They're just the literal worst. <laughs>